Hi my joyful artists, it's Cassandra, it's five o'clock, five o'clock time for our live where I'll be sharing today some insights and inspirations into my creative process but also some strategies to help you with um, making your works of heart even more glorious than they already are. Five, I love the number five, I've become obsessed with numerology at the moment, I've always had a bit of a fleeting interest. Five was Coco Chanel's favourite number, so interesting tip for all of you there. She just loved five, think Chanel number five. She viewed that as her lucky, lucky number and it certainly was, it was one of, gone on to be one of the best selling perfumes of all time. So in today's video, I thought I would start with the little seed that sparked my idea about what I would talk to you about regarding Carol had asked me what was it in particular that went through my mind when I created my artworks. So I thought today I pulled this card. Some of you already own the Art of Life Inspiration deck. I brought with me the original artwork, which I'll show you in a minute. And on the back of that card is the saying, find serenity in acceptance. And the words are, be courageous in ch changing things you can't, oh, sorry, be courageous in changing things you can, accepting of those you can't, and wise in knowing the difference. Now that can speak to us in life and in art, can't it? Because sometimes we have to be courageous in changing the things we can. Maybe something's not working in our painting. Maybe we have to risk everything. Helen Frankenthaler once said she, she every day she risks something because she might make a change to her painting and totally destroy it. So there is uh, that aspect of being courageous as an artist. And then of course some things uh, we can't change. Maybe a painting's gone out into the world and we wish we could get it back and, and fix something about it or maybe someone didn't follow through with a purchase or and then we have to know the difference. So a little bit about my creative process is I do really value little paintings. Now behind me you'll see one of my big paintings, a huge painting and that was because number one, tip number one is intention. So really be thinking about what is your intention when you sit down to create? Is it because you want to try doing a big painting just to challenge yourself? Is it because you want to play with a pink colour? Is it because you're inspired as I was by Rothko of course and also Helen Frankenthaler? Um, to try a different style and this was one of my very very first flow paintings. I think I did this painting in about 20 oh, Might have even been Before the millennium before the year 2000 and I did this painting and if you look carefully It's actually many colors because I completely redid it not so long ago because where we live now is a pink house So the intention was to change the painting to suit the decor so sometimes that's my thinking process. How do I want to feel? What is the artwork? How do I want to feel in the room where the artwork is? For instance, the idea of having a pale blue or a pale green is not very inspiring to me because it would make me feel cold. I've got a lot of blue and green outside. I've got enough of that in nature. And so I love this pink. And uh, so that, that was the intention there. But I created this intention uh, during COVID just to be more playful with my painting and experiment and making tiny paintings is a really great way so here's the original artwork which I later framed it's actually almost no bigger than the actual cards from the Art of Life inspiration deck so it's just a tiny painting and then I made it look really nice by getting a professional mat put around it and the painting, this painting is called Serenity. And in part, going back to intention, you can start maybe with a feeling. Maybe you're starting with how it's well-being. Your intention is just to, you know what they say, a painting a day keeps the doctor away. Or rather, I just made that up. But maybe it's just because you want to go there because it makes you feel good to go to your art or your writing. So insert writing 
playing music, whatever your medium is, when I talk about painting. Uh, maybe you've got a project, so I wanted to create a series called the Joy Joyous Weed Gems. So I created a, um, quite a few of the same sort of similar size and just tried doing different colours. Maybe uh, just it's just the whole, yeah, in this case it was because we we're in the middle of COVID still. I just wanted more serenity. I wanted to be more inspired by nature. Uh, and I wanted to, it was feelings, so very much my thinking process is actually my feeling process, what, am I, what do I want to feel, or what do I want to release, and I shared with you earlier, which I'm really loving, because sometimes I, it's really great, so thank you for your questions, and though that those that answered the questionnaire, is sometimes I don't really think about bit too much I just sort of say right I'm going to set the timer and off I go but I've been really loving this little uh, circle of feelings that I left in the group and really starting to thanks to those of you that have asked me about what goes through my thinking I've been thinking about often like one of the paintings that I put a YouTube clip on so don't forget to visit my YouTube video and it was when I was really I was in the zone, I was really angry, and so I, you could say I felt mad, I felt frustrated, I felt critical, all these things, I felt like we were being betrayed, and all sorts of things, so you don't always have to have a happy, happy feeling when you start painting. I'm not an artist who likes to create angry paintings that hang on people's walls and yell anger. It's just not my style, and I know that there are people who are more sort of um, activist artists in that respect that have a lot to say, um, and a lot of their art does shout that sort of angry message. But I'm a joyful artist, and so when I was painting, I chose, so going back to my process, I chose a colour that was empowered, and I was inspired by a word that Pam Gregory, the astrologer, said, and it was all around step into your flower. So I chose the, I named the painting Step Into Your Flower and I chose the color magenta because magenta has a very spiritual connotation. It's a very empowered, you think of magenta as like a mix of red, the passion of red, the spirituality of white, and then it sort of has a bit of a violet hue. So you, sometimes you can just really think about the symbolism of colours when you, when you start. So in terms of my process, I've talked about intention. Why are you painting? Feeling. What are the feelings you want to create? Or when someone's commissioning some art from me, very often we will discuss one of the questions. I'll send out a questionnaire about how they want to feel. And so some of my clients, some of my large beeswax commissions, they've said that they want to feel warm, loving, cosy. So, you know, some colours are more suggestive of that than other colours. So that sometimes plants the seed of where I begin. Sometimes they'll tell me, they, I'll ask what inspires them, or I'll look around the room for furnishings or look to the landscape for clues and they'll say they want to bring uh, the n nature inside and so that can lead to um, ideas but then I'll often with my big big pieces I do start with tiny paintings much like an architect does where they just sort of sketch out a few concepts they don't just do all the expensive huge work of of creating models and really expensive um, concepts, often they have to scribble something down on a napkin and kind of throw things around and get a feel for it. So I want to come back to tiny paintings for those of you that feel stretched for time or maybe you've devalued the worth of a tiny tiny painting. So my one of my, it was a triptych meaning three tiny paintings, they were one piece, a painting I later called Love Stain was inspired by lyrics so sometimes, what is the thinking behind my painting? Well, it might be a song sparks an idea about a painting. Uh, could be a phrase in a book, 
I mentioned Pam Gregory, the astrologer. All sorts of things can plant a seed. And this triptych I called Love Stain, uh, it's a beautiful song about someone being a love stain on someone's heart, meaning, you know, they're, they're permanently there. And it was tight, they were about mm, 100 by 100, so 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres approximately. And um, that was the painting that won the Y Art Award. It took out the supreme prize of the Y Art Award. I was gobsmacked. I said that can't be right because there were, in my mind, bigger, more important, better paintings, more literal. Mine was very abstract. And um, I said, do you mind me asking why did the judges choose mine? And they just said it was different. And I think it just, someone brought brought the painting and said it just spoke to his heart and he's never forgotten it. And that's where I think painting with emotion is so important, sort of getting out of your mind. And some of the art classes people have come to, it's been really fun just to loosen it up. Uh, someone came to the, uh, the Wellington Art Retreat recently. Somebody, um, Carol said to me, the best thing, she said, don't take it the wrong way, but the best thing was when you left the room and you left me for 30 minutes and said I had to have a painting, you know, finished. And it was gone, Whoa! And she did, she just ripped into it. There's nothing like a time challenge. So my process again is sometimes saying, what can I do in 15 minutes or less? And I shared that with you yesterday in the group. And I've got the paintings here, so it's very messy. It's a little book called The Playbook. I mean, that's quite a painting in itself, isn't it? I probably could frame that, couldn't I? Yeah, funny. Funny what sparks an idea. I, qu I quite like that painting, actually. Huh. Let's just see. Another thing I do, I know I'm hopping around, but hopefully you can take notes, is I just take photos throughout the process so that if I make a mistake, I can go back to it. But also, when you take a photo, you can crop it, you can try it differently, and you see it differently you can look at it differently and that can be super helpful so I yesterday so I have a little playbook I just do play dates in it basically I'm not trying to impress anyone or be a superstar so yesterday I shared with you I hadn't been painting I've been writing and I thought again intention what can I do in 15 minutes feeling uh, I just wanted a little bit of fun away from sort of words and thinking and well-being I know that I always feel like I can go into a deep meditation it's a very mindful spiritual practice when I paint so I wanted to do that and I also thought about a project I was thinking about a big large beeswax that I might like to put in my hallway so I created look they're just on rough paper now later, like I shared here, if I wanted to, if I wanted to mount it, it would look much better if it had a nice mount around it. So some of the people that have come to my workshops have done tiny paintings. They've been so surprised at how much they love them. They went and got them mounted. I like to work on threes sometimes because it means you can try different compositions. So I was just playing with different composition so they're all quite different but they're all using they're all using the same uh, format I usually tape around the outside so I get a nice clear edge and I just play and then you can always go oh would it look better that way would it look better upside down um, you might crop it a little bit you might like I do I like to play in some of the apps like canvy c-a-n-v-y dot com and uh, make it look bigger than I painted it. So if you go to my website after this call and you look at this painting, so again it's a tiny painting that I did. It's called She Just Paint She Just Pointed Herself to the Light. And it's just on a little cheap little canvas from the warehouse. And I was again, again just playing with doing some roses and using dark backgrounds because I don't, I haven't typically used dark backgrounds. If you go to my website, I think that took 
uh, just a short period of time. I was just playing technique wise. I was playing with the complement of red, which is green, which, you know, flowers of course but it's good if you understand why they go together so red and obviously when we add uh, white in it and tint it it becomes a pink so there's not too much going on in terms of complexity of color it's a very simple two color painting really red and white with different values so I've also used a diagonal composition and then I put a little you know not having it the same size because variety is interesting and in a way I've introduced some verticals here with this, some of the line making that I've done some diag more diagonals and uh, that's a little bit about sort of theory in a, in a sense about what makes a good painting so when I talk about intention feeling play just playing Later, that's when you can step back and critique. You can say, why is it working? Why isn't it working? But not, not at the beginning. So many people, perfection will keep you paralyzed. Just forget about it. Just You may have to have lots of affirmations. You may have to record them so that every day you wake up and you reprogram your subconscious because we've really been educated to be afraid of painting outside of the lines or making a mistake or not having it perfect first time you're just playing you can fix it up later fix and finish you can go back later I mean I it's just a 10 minute painting or whatever I might go back and and do some more work on it or I might use that as a concept and I might create a big painting like that for someone which is what did happen with one of my beeswaxes commissions it was a tiny paint it was a tiny painting he loved it and he asked me to supersize it uh, so that sometimes you know you can get that little bit of fun just like this one that would that could be a really cool big painting if I did a series I'm hoping to have an exhibition in Wellington of really big color field paintings why reinvent the world I've wheel I've already got some concepts that I can play with so yeah get yourself a playbook and um, just dedicate some time just to experimenting with your playbook and uh, one of my playbooks very messy because I decided to play with food <laughs> food painting but here's some other sort of concepts I was playing again composition wise where where is the quiet space in a painting so i'm thinking about where am i putting the quiet space i'm thinking about where the darks are going i'm thinking about again blue and orange are complementary colors uh, the diagonals and verticals points of interest all of that comes later the initial stage is just you know playing around later i just stuck another painting on top of it Again, it was quite fun and it might spark an idea. So, yeah, I would encourage you, uh, this is just a short live. I know everyone's quite challenged. I'm aiming to keep it sort of about 20 minutes long. I just encourage you to play. You may play with colour composition. You may play with colour harmonies. You may play with all the great artists look at other people's work and interpret them differently or you might just play with you know copying a few paintings just to get in the flow you might think oh I wonder what if I could create a tiny painting like Cassandra's painting passion you know think about it really causes you to look so you think oh look at the edges what's she done with the edges and where she put the color where where how is the composition structured and uh, oh she's got some drips or whatever so you know that could be quite fun just challenging yourself it's not like you're going out and recreating a painting and selling it in your own name when you know it's another person's work this was one of the one of my early tiny tiny I hadn't painted for a long time until COVID came our way and I created this really tiny little painting here another one I'm not saying it's a miraculous piece, but it just got me started again and I was just hooning around with the islands and the Bay of Islands and just making a general, just having a bit of fun. And my beautiful partner is so encouraging, he said, I'll buy that. I think
think he sort of felt I was a bit discouraged about everything. He said, I'll buy that. So I just keep this painting because it's a good memory. And sometimes that's the intention to create lovely memories. I will do a little video after this video of the painting that I did when my mum passed and it was the day that I heard that my mum had died and it was a real shock. I had spent two weeks with her and we'd had a lovely, lovely time but I hadn't thought in any way she was going to die. And so I went to the studio. So my intention was just just to, I guess it's a bit of healing sadness, but also create something for my mum and her memory. And she loved black. And I, as I say, I'm not usually a black painter. And then I thought, oh, it could be fun to put some frankincense. And at her funeral service, the Catholic priest, he sort of waved this beautiful frankincense. And I just happened to have been sent some by a gentleman and beautiful man and, um, Japan who knew the Sultan of Oman and I ground it up. I'm just experimenting doing a Leonardo and I put it in with the pure pigment and the beeswax and I cooked it all up and then I just just had fun and again it was just a tiny piece and I want a lot of texture, a lot of complexity because you know it was kind of you know that rough and the smooth of losing someone, being happy that they didn't suffer but you're, you're lost as well at the same time but also the complexity that was my mum so that's this kind of thinking in our relationship that was some of the thinking that went into it then often I'll talk to my paintings as well and I'll, I'll just have little conversations with my paintings or I'll have music or I'll sing so that's just my, my unique process that's probably enough uh, on the whole behind the scenes of the thinking and feeling that goes into my work. Some of the techniques about thinking about color composition, values, lights and darks, composition, all those things, as well as just really knowing the value of doing little works and just being playful. You can always reference other people's work to, to sort of analyze why does a painting work or why doesn't it work. Just be really playful and really kind to yourself. Be a bit childlike like I am. Get away from the perfectionist judging adult. Do that later. Have some distance from your painting. Don't jump in like those tiny paintings I just shared you. Don't jump in and criticize them straight away. And I'm not overworking them. They are what they are. They were just serving a purpose to turn up and paint for a little period of time and later I might look back and think they're going to be a concept for a bigger painting. So I hope that has been enjoyable for you. Thank you again for watching, being part of the community. Please do let people know if you feel other people could benefit from the group. Love to see the, the numbers climb in this group so that we're getting more inspiration from each other. And please do comment below about what you're taking away from today's live that could be really helpful for you and your creative practice. What's maybe one, two or three things that you're going to take away and implement as a stretch goal. Love you to share some of your work in the group. So there you go. That's it from me, the Ca Cassandra, the joyful artist and sending you much love and inspiration. Thanks for being here. You inspire me.